Hey guys, have you ever needed to convert binary to binary coded decimal in order to drive something like a seven segment display or an LCD screen via Verilog? Let's go through how that works and write up a Verilog algorithm. So just real quickly, let's go over what binary coded decimal is. Oftentimes we'll have binary that will represent a decimal number, but it can't be directly used to drive a display or something like that. So what we do is we break down each digit in a number and represent that as a four bit binary nibble. So in this case, two becomes 0010, nine becomes 1001, and two is 0010. So the binary coded decimal for 292 is 0010, 1001, 0010. Now to get from here to there, especially in Verilog, we need to know how many nibbles we're going to need. So the first thing we think is 21 is going to take at least two nibbles. So we'll have eight bits here. Now we take that and we do two to the eighth minus one, and that gives us the highest number that we can create out of eight bits, which is 255. 255 is three digits wide, so we'll need three nibbles to represent that number. Now to convert to BCD, we're going to use a method called double dabble. And I'll show you how this works with the number 21. Now I'm binary at 0001, And if you look over the right here, we've got two different full registers. One is the binary representation of 21, and the other is our empty three nibble register. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna use both these as if they're together, and we'll shift them over one at a time. And every time we're gonna check each nibble on this side of the shift register to see if any of these nibbles are greater than four. If they're greater than four, then we're gonna add three. If they're not greater than four, then we'll just shift again. So to start, we say, are any of these nibbles here greater than three? No, then we're gonna go ahead and shift. The next time we go through and we say are greater than three? No, we're gonna shift. For the first three times, that's always gonna be a no because to be greater than four would mean we'd have to fill this bit right here. Now our number started out three bits over, so it's actually gonna take us three more times at least to hit a number that's greater than four. So we'll say no on this one and shift it, no on this one and shift it, and no on this one and shift it. Now once we get to this shift here, you'll notice that we have four, no twos, and a one makes five. So we're gonna to have to add three. So a quick example of that would be one plus one is zero, carry a one. One plus one is zero, carry a one. One plus one is zero, carry a one. One plus zero is one. Now that we've done the add, we have to shift over one. So once we shift over one, we're gonna check that again and see if any of these nibbles are over four. And they aren't in this case, so we'll go ahead and shift again. And once we shift again, we get this last number here, which is our binary coded decimal. You see you have zero, two, and one, which equals 21. Okay, so now that we know how double dabble works, let's go check out the code. Real quick before we get into the code, guys, if you like my video, hit the like button down below. If you like what I do on the channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell. So this is our very log script for the BCD converter. Um, we'll just kind of start out from the top and go down here. Uh, time scale is gonna be for later when we do the simulation. And we start out by just opening up the module. We've got our inputs, we've got clock. We're gonna use an enable. We'll have our binary in, our BCD out, and then we'll make an output that'll let us know when BCD is done and ready. From there, I just set up some variables for a simple state machine. This state machine is only gonna have five states, so we've got idle, setup, add, shift, and done. I coded this way to be more thorough to follow the actual example that we built earlier. So there are definitely many ways to do this in a more elegant way and probably use less resources. Uh, but this is just to get you to know how Double Dabble works and how you can implement it to get BCD from binary. So after we made our state variables, we set up a bunch of registers. We're going to have our BCD data. Now this is going to be a full block that's going to have one side where the actual BCD code is. And the other side of the register is going to hold the binary so that it can shift all the way into our BCD shift and add. Uh, the next is just going to be a state register to be able to tell what state we're in. Then I built the register so the code can tell if the algorithm's busy. Um, doing an actual conversion. Then we've got a counter, and you know we use counters in just about everything. Uh, and then we've got our ready result as a register so that we can feed that back out to ready. So now we move into our always loop. Uh, we've got always at the positive edge of the clock. We're gonna open that. And then we wanna look at the enable. So the enable is gonna tell us whether or not we wanna pull in the actual binary that's coming in and start turning that into BCD. So we begin that and we say, are we busy? Is it busy actually making a conversion at the moment? So if it's tell day busy or not busy, then we're gonna begin. We're gonna say BCD data, the top 16 bits just equals zero. 
and the rest of the bits down equal that actual binary code that's coming in. Then from here, we're going to change our state to setup. So this is going to throw us into our state machine. So our state machine down here, uh, you know, we're just going to do a case on state, and we'll start with our idle state. And in the idle state, we don't really want to do much. We just want to reset our ready. We want to make sure that ready is zero, saying that we don't have a code ready at the moment, and that busy is at zero, so we're not busy at the moment. So that when the enable happens, we're not busy, and we can go in and enter setup, right? So the state machine will always be just running in this idle state until the enable is pulled up and the code is not busy converting at the moment. From there, it'll move into setup from idle. Now in the setup state, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and say that we're busy. So we'll mark that as a one. And then we're just going to change state to add. Now that could be cut out, but I just want to make sure that the code is absolutely clear at this point. So then moving into the add, the very first thing we need to do is check each one of these nibbles and see, is it greater than four? And if it's greater than four, then we're just going to add three. But we also want to make sure that that three, if it's added, that it carries over to the next nibble. So we're going to check this nibble here, which is 15 down to 12, but I'm going to set the top of the BCD data, which is 27, all the way down to the bottom, which is 12 here, to 27 down to 12 plus 3. And I'm going to do the same thing with the next nibble here. Is it greater than 4? If it is, then we're going to go ahead and add 3, and that's going to be from 16 up to 27, because the bottom of this one is at 16. And we'll just keep doing that for all four nibbles, right? So we check and say, if it is, then add 3. If it's not, then just move on. Now, moving on, after we've checked and added to whatever we need to, we're going to change our state to shift, right? So now is where we're actually going to shift the code over. Now, what we do in shift is we take and we add one to our shift counter, which started out at zero. And we're going to continue to count this every time that there's a shift until we get to 12 shifts or 11. So it starts out at zero, so we're including zero. So we're going to increase that until we get to 11, which we'll see down here. And then we take our BCD data, and all we do is shift that left by 1. Now, when our shift counter does equal 11, then we want to take our shift counter, we're going to set it back to 0, and we're going to change states to the done state. But notice, if it's not 11 yet, if we're still shifting and still doing this whole thing, we're going to go back to add. So we're going to shift, and then we'll go back and we'll add. So we'll go add, shift, add, shift, add, shift. And every time, we're going to count until we get to 11. When we get to 11, we're going to reset the shift counter and then set the state to done. And when we set the state to done, we'll move to this state down here, which is done. And in the done state, basically, we just want to say that the result is ready. So you can read what's coming out of the BCD out pins, and that will be the proper result. And then we're going to change state from there and go back to idle so that it'll sit in idle and wait for the next code to come in. Now, we should always have a default in any of our case statements, and this default actually just does nothing. But at this point, I realized that we should probably go ahead and add to that. So what we'll do, we'll do a begin. And then what I want to do is just make sure that if any default weird code comes through, we're going to make state come from idle. If anything happens during this whole thing that actually sets the state to something weird that's not one of the states that we've set, then it'll just set it back to idle and it'll have to start over again. So from there, all we do is wrap up our case statement, then we end the always loop, and then all we do is assign our BCD out, which is our output, equal to the top portion or the top 16 bits of BCD data. And we also want to assign ready, which is our ready output, to the register result ready. And then we end our module. So what we'll do from here, we'll go ahead and put this into a simulation in Vivado to show you guys how to simulate this sort of thing and what it should actually look like, and also to show you that it actually works. But I'll do that in the next video. So guys, if you want to always see the next video that comes out, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification button down below, and that'll tell you when I put out new videos. Also, like this video if you like it, guys. Um, look for this code down below at my GitHub account. Have a great day, and don't forget to love well.